I'm using my six and a half inch squares. I like using six and a half inch squares because they're very versatile. You can cut them into smaller pieces. You can add things to them. But today I'm going to use my Drunkard's Path ruler. It's a two part ruler, a curve, and it makes a curve and, and makes a circle. Six and a half inch squares are ideal for using with my uh, Drunkard's Path ruler. The Drunkard's Path has two parts and I always can vary the sizes by using a piece of masking tape and placing it on the ruler. That makes a smaller circle when it's finished. Usually when I put the squares into the six and a half inch bin, I don't sort them by color. So now that I'm going to be using them, I try to get myself a little pile of similar colors, patterns, and right now I am sorting for two different quilts. In the bin there are lots of muted colors, uh, soft colors, and also there are lots of patterns that are wild and crazy and big motifs. So I'm going to make two different quilts with these six and a half inch blocks. The first one is going to be the Drunkard's Path. The second one I think I'll save that for another video, but while I'm sorting, I'm, I'm getting them all prepared for the next quilt as well. That duplicates, uh, that, sorry, that makes me uh, a little bit more efficient because I'm not duplicating tasks. I'm sorting these things together at the same time, but one will be used later. So I've got a couple of piles here. The one that is in my hand, it's all those uh, patterns. There's vegetables, there's spools of thread, there are dark colors, there's bold colors, they're going somewhere else. The ones I'm going to use for the Drunkard's Path are all kind of blues, greens, muted colors, some patterns, but they're all going to be kind of a muted color quilt. And so for this quilt, this Drunkard's Path, I'm only using one half of the Drunkard's, half, Drunkard's Path kit, which is two pieces. So the first time I cut with it, I put the semicircle in the corner of the block and I cut the semicircle and the edges like that, I do toss away. I'm going to tell you, I toss that out. And then for the next part, now this is where my masking tape comes in. This is a one inch tape and I place the same semicircle on the corner using the masking tape as my guide. You can make this circle any size you want. Put wider tape, put narrower tape. It's the same curve and those two pieces will sew together. It will sew together every time. You have to trim them at the end, but they do sew together because it's the same curve. So in this case, I used a one inch masking tape and I'm using that as my guide. And then I use my rotary cutter and I cut multiples at one time. I don't think I make any more than about five at a time, but I can cut up four or five at a time. And so there's the outside of the curve. Now you notice it's going to be smaller, but that is an advantage for me because I hate trying to match up the ends. <laughs> so I always do a little bit of trimming when I'm done. It doesn't hurt my feelings one bit. Now this semicircle that's left is big enough to make another circle if I wanted to. But what I do is I take my square up ruler and I cut a three and a half inch square from the remaining piece that's on the desk and I will um, just use that in my three and a half inch bin box. So there they are, the bunch of three and a half inch squares that I've used already. Now what I do is I kind of match up the inner circle and the outer circle. I have a whole pile of inner circles and outer circles that I kind of match them up so that there's a light and a dark 
and that they kind of look nice together. I know my sen sense of looking nice together is quite interesting, but uh, it, they all go together and it's kind of fun trying to fit something together. That's the next part. When I sew these together, obviously this part is not going to come down to the bottom edge. So this part is not going to go to the edge either. So I give myself a little bit of leeway, about that much. And what I try to do is keep this curve next to this curve over here, next to this curve over here. And for that reason, I do not pin these or I do not measure them or I do not mark them, I just sew. And I keep the needle down. I keep the edge of the presser foot on the edge of the seam allowance. I take my hand, I hold this one to this side. And as I sew slowly, I have it on slow speed. I hold my hand underneath on the bottom part. I take this one up, I hold it up and I can manipulate it as I sew around this curve, keeping both edges together because I can see both edges here. So when I start, I want to have the colored section here parallel to the edge of the one underneath. And when I finish, I want to have the same thing parallel to the finished edge. Then when I press this out, I know that my six and a half inch ruler fits the background or the outside. And then once I press this, all I have to do is trim off a little bit of excess curve or straight edge here and here, but I need to press it first definitely. And because these seam allowances on the back are quite uniform, I can snip them and press them to the inside, but I press them all to the outside. And I make sure that I press everything and give it a good steam iron so that they lay flat before I trim them. So I will make a whole bunch of them and then I will trim a whole bunch of them and then I will place them up on my design wall so that I can mix and match the colors so that I have a nice uniform range of colors that I like. Now remember, I'm trying to pick out all the dull muted colors, but I also don't want to have something that's really bright and bold and only and not have anything to balance it. So I have to be a little bit careful, but I've got all kinds of pieces of fabric in this bin, so I want to use them up. So I'll show you um, how to trim them and then I'll show you what I've got done. So once it's pressed, and like I said, I press the edges to the outside. I take my six and a half inch square up ruler. I know it's going to fit the underside block because it was a six and a half inch square. I'm trimming away little bits on two sides and that will give me 
a finished six and a half inch square. Now I'll show you what I've made. So here I've made a number of these squares and I've started adding them up to on the wall. I keep making them, I keep adding them on the wall. The quilt gets bigger and I have more choice and I can move these blocks around as long as I don't sew them all together. So usually I get the whole size of the quilt blocks, all the blocks made, and then I can sort and move the colors around and move the blocks around so that I've got sort of light, dark, light, dark, and get myself some good value contrasts and some good color contrasts and make sure that all the darks aren't in one side and all the lights aren't on another side. And just take some photographs that are black and white and look at them and check them out. Make sure that you like the way they're positioned and you can move them around, you can add more, you can take some away and you can exchange them until you sew them together. Then you've really got something that you've got to stay with. So I have all my squares finished and I've sewn them together. I took a number of photographs in black and white to make sure that I had a good distribution of color and value. That's always important. And um, each of the completed blocks, uh, a whole circle is a 12 and a half inch square. So this quilt uh, with five circles across and six circles down makes a 60 inch by 72 inch finished quilt. I'm not quite sure yet if I would add a border, but I think this is going to be the size of this quilt. I have been waiting for a roll of batting to come in the mail by delivery. So it's on hold until I can get some batting. I've run out of my quilt batting, but I have to wor worry about that later. Um, so I'm just going to put a complete backing on it and quilt it um, with my sewing machine in a straight line or diagonal line walking foot um, stitch. But I have to wait until I get my backing finished and get my batting in the mail. So I thought I would finish this uh, video and put it online so that you can see what I've been doing. Uh, using six and a half inch squares is a really great way to make this kind of a drunkard's path and make these circles. And it was a lot of fun. I really enjoy making the circles. On a side note, I have had a water leak in my basement and uh, I've got a whole bunch of things on hold. On the floor, I've got all of my uh, instrument cases and I've got things all over the place right now that I have to wait until I get my water leak fixed so I can uh, go back and make things that I enjoy doing. <sighs> the trials of living in a house sometimes. We've had a lot of rain the last little while, so I've got to um, sort this thing out. Anyway, I am still happy and I'm still making quilt squares. I just have to think about doing things in a little more cramped way because I've got stuff all over the place. Anyway, that's my problem, not yours. So uh, I hope this video has been something that you've enjoyed. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up and give me a comment. I really enjoy reading the comments that you make. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.